Hello and welcome back to the Remembering Tuscola Facebook uh, YouTube webcast thingamajig. I'm David Porter. I'm here with uh, the uh, <clears throat> incredible duo, Mike Carroll, Bill Englehart. Mike's going to wipe his nose because that's always good to do on the. That's always good. <laughs> yeah. No grooming on screen, remember, Mike? Yeah, that's all I do is groom. <laughs> yeah. I think I think we need a different backdrop compared to this. Well, he's in Hawaii. We're up in northern Canada. <laughs> I'm, I'm a I'm at home. We just had a lot of rain. Yeah. 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 The Floods. waves are coming down the street. This is uh this is my backyard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good lot you got, David. Well, it was. Um, I don't think those crops are going to make it. Yeah. Well, it looks like the coconut oil is going to do okay. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, that'll be bad. I don't like coconut. So what do you guys <laughs> do? Anything, well, anything going on, Bill? Well, I told you the other day, I told David, I've had some comments on the program. Oh, you did? Yeah, those people. And they're, and they're very positive. But oh, they asked those are to remain. Best time they asked, yeah, they asked to remain not anonymous, though. So. My experience, <laughs> they are. My experience is most people looking you right in the eye will be positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You suck, Carol. <laughs> yeah, well, then. I, I, David, I get no comments. But then again, I don't go to IJ and stand there by the front door for two hours. I did uh, I did get a phone call the, the other day from uh, Ed Allen. Oh, Eddie? Good Eddie. Yeah. Down in Florida. Yeah. And uh, your name came up. Well, so. Edward uh, writes, used to write for the Newman paper, the kind of articles you write, historical, funny. Former superintendent of schools of yeah. several districts. Married Tuscola girl, Kathy mm -hmm. Kelsey. Ed's class of 65, Newman High School. Yep. Good guy. Yeah. Well, it, it was interesting because uh, I got off the phone with him. And uh, then I went to do the uh, the pictures, you know, scan, you know, digitize the pictures that, that I do. And this one came up. Well, I know who Pete, that is. Pete, Pete, Kelsey. Pete Kelsey. Boy, that's a young Pete Kelsey, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Same but that uh, wouldn't that be Ed's uh, father-in-law? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it would. So it's funny how that works, where uh, somebody's name comes up, and then then their picture shows up in the archives. Uh huh. Well, I worked for Pete. <clears throat> I had one one Pete Kel. I had a couple of Pete Kelsey stories, but. Uh, Are they appropriate? Oh yeah, one of them was uh, one summer I, I worked for Quentin Weber, great old Quentin Weber, and we were re-roofing Hotel Douglas. Hmm. And we were doing a hot hot dough. They you know, we were melting the oil and pouring it out. And right. what you do is the, it comes in a cold chunk and you rip the paper off of it, you know, and it's up there. And so Quentin said, go throw that and down below was a one-story little building, and you throw it uh -huh. down on the roof yeah. of that building. And I'm up to the edge, and I saw Pete and somebody <laughs> brought a brand new couch out the side by the alley to deliver, and I dropped that thing straight down, and a wind gust caught it and blew it right over, and smacked right up against Go. the couch. And Pete Kelsey goes like this: He goes, ah! <laughs> and he looks up at me, and he just goes nuts. Is getting ready to deliver it, <laughs> and it's now covered in hot oil. So Quentin said, what happened? I told him, he said, oh, no. So Quentin went down. I think Quentin spent all day on that couch trying oh, to man. get the oil out of it. Well, but, I've got a Pete Kelsey story. Well, you give yours. Well, See if it's funnier than mine. It, well, <laughs> he screamed when he saw me, too. I bet. Uh, it was <laughs> coming a, for his daughter. It was <laughs> a brand new pickup truck. And uh, we delivered on a Saturday evening in Champagne, except we didn't get the delivery made. It was a China hutch and chairs and whatnot. And 
Junior Donalds. Oh, strong as a bull. Junior's with me. <laughs> and a girl ran an intersection and hit that brand new truck in the side. And uh, we were able to pick up the furniture out of the street, throw it back in the truck, and just drive straight back to the Kelsey's, to the warehouse. And, and uh, Jeanette met us first. And she was cool, calm, and collected. And yeah. her question was, you know, are you boys all right? <laughs> yeah. That was not Pete's first question. No. <laughs> Pete's question was, oh, God, look what they've done to my new truck. <laughs> it was a brand new pickup truck. And there's Junior with blood shooting out oh, of his head. Oh, Junior was, it scared him to death. Did, Junior, so. Junior, did Junior jump out and give him, sock him in the face? Oh, man. <laughs> it's a wonder he didn't. Junior was tough nut. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Good old Pete Kelsey. Good old Pete. He was a huckster, wasn't he? Pete. Pete was in business for a couple of years and uh, a normal retail store and he was going under. And so he had a going out of business sale, 25% off and stuff. And his business started booming and he had an idea. So he just became a discount uh, furniture store mm -hmm. and wound up uh, being wildly successful. Now, Bob King, on the other hand, had a constant going out of business sale. <laughs> for years for ever and somebody said is he really going out of business <laughs> so going out of business sales used to be a really back in the days before you had discount stores going out of business sales were a way to pick up your business yeah there's a little marketing trick i've seen where uh people have a going out for business sale yeah so going out business for yeah so how's eddie doing why did eddie call you that's well, he wanted to talk about a project he's working on that might need some publicity down the road. And well, good. And uh, he's a good writer. He he could do a good Newman history book. Yeah, he suggested that he would be willing to write it. And I, anytime somebody wants to make my life easier, I'm all for it. Yeah, I'll write it and publish it. You just put it in your paper. Yeah, that's that's fine. You want to write it? Knock yourself out. Yeah, Ed can do a good job. Oh, that looks like uh, Hallie. Hallie looks like Hopkins. Hallie Hopkins. Looks like Hallie Hopkins, but that's but that's not Roy. Well, if that's Roy, he went through some plastic surgery. Uh, Who was that, Beck? Oh, good. Is she picking you up? No, I think that we're, she's going to come here. Yeah. For some reason, I'm having a look at the Facebook stuff on my phone while we talk, and for some reason, when the phone you know, sits there a while and the screen goes black. It, it it resets my Facebook to where I've got to find the pictures again. So anyway, the... Uh, you need me to move? Uh, she the street. Comments online are, are uh, Hallie Hopkins, and they said, but that's not, uh, that's not her husband, Roy Hoppy Hopkins. Oh, this is the photo that revealed the affair. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my goodness <laughs> i'm sorry that just that joke was just begging for it the you name know. on the envelope is guy randolph is who guy just, randolph just a second david Can... coming okay just a second bill is uh we can talk about it. who is it again guy randolph Randolph. Well, we're sorry about that bad joke that's I gave. Judy, uh, that's Judy's parents, maybe. So I didn't know if that was. Uh, uh, Bill's going to be right back. You want me to pause? Yeah. Why don't she has to move his truck? Okay. If I can figure out how to. There we go. Are we on? Now we're back on. We had to take a break. Bill had to move the truck. Bill and I are in an age now. And I, it happens to me all the time that you look down at your shirt and it looks like you've dropped some ketchup on your shirt. You know, where'd that come from? And you, all of a sudden you see blood streaming down your arm and Bill just noticed he's got blood on his arm. Your skin becomes like uh, toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. As, like tissue paper. Yeah. And you just, the lightest touch and all of a sudden you got a rip or a bleed. Yeah. So anyway, so he said, uh, Chubb, Connor said that he thought it was Hallie Hopkins. 
but nobody seems to understand the relationship between Hallie and Mr. Randolph. Now, you, you say that's Judy Randolph's dad. Well, know? I don't know. I I mean, Judy's, uh, Bean's uh, family was a Randolph. Ron Bean's uh, late wife. Right. Boy, that sure looks like Hallie Hopkins to me, doesn't it to you? Well, he, I don't know, but he looks like Mr. Randolph. Well, <laughs> Everybody online thinks it looks like uh, it's Hallie Hopkins, although uh, Kathy Hinton Burnett says reminds her of Mrs. Carmichael, eighth grade English teacher. <laughs> I mean, we <laughs> well, <I'm> just, <laughs> this guy got around. <laughs> so, but the, uh, the general consensus is Hallie Hopkins. But like I said, the name on the envelope, and this is 1943. Well, this is a well. You know, maybe maybe she was married and he died, and then she you know, married Roy. What's wrong, huh? Beck's back. What happened? I thought you left. No, I just pulled the car out of the garage. Okay, huh? All right. Do we need to pause? Bye. No. No, we're all right. Bye, bye. So maybe somebody can help us solve that mystery. Oh, there's the Dion twins. <laughs> What year is this? Well, let me check here. If they're not know. twins, are they? No, no. One's older than the other. 1962. 62? We were just starting our prime. Well, I was. <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> 62, so they would be... What year would they graduate then? Well, I'm just going to say somewhere around six years behind me, so early 70s. Yeah, I was born in December of 64, almost 65. So these girls would be a little bit older than me. Kevin Connor says it's Christine Wood Connor and Tammy Wood. Hmm. And well, the he point name on the envelope is Mrs. Robert Wood so that that jibes with the uh, the envelope didn't know them did you? no I think they were uh, from Pasodum well you okay we didn't yeah we didn't mess around too much in Pasodum I, I did didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> one time well, I dated the Corberline girl up there. And, Looks like uh, they got uh, they, snowmen on the dresses. Vicky Light, yeah. They're from Sweden. Who did you say you dated? Vicky? No. Nikki? Corberline girl. Well, what was her first name? You know, I, I never knew their first name. I God, just, you didn't get very far, did you? I just knew their phone number. <laughs> okay, Bill, who's this? Well, she looks awfully familiar. Well, if we just knew her name. What's her initials, David, if you know? Well, of course, this we know her. J.W. that Bruce Williams' daughter? I don't think so. Is it? No. It's in 1952. And uh, Kevin What's Connor, uh, Kevin Connor uh, seems to get a lot of these right. Well, let's get him on here. Is it another Connor? It's Jackie Wilson. Jackie Wilson Sharp. Jackie Sharp. I loved her music. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jackie Wilson. Oh, that's a different Jackie Yeah, Wilson. that is a different one. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's somewhat different. I'm sorry. <clears throat> different gender. Um, 1952. Married to not Jerry no, Sharp, no. Jerry Sharp. Well, might be so his mother or something. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. We're flopping around here. We yeah. Shirley Quinn says she's class of nineteen fifty four. So this is her sophomore year. Well, this was nineteen fifty two. That's yeah. a sophomore picture. Wow. Hmm. Initials L R. I wonder if she knew Mr. Randolph. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get too many here in the mm. picture. What year is that? 19. 
51, it looks like. Bill, I don't know whether to give you a point on that or not. Well, a point for what? Oh. It's Leota Randolph. That's, well, see. Well, you were making a joke. <laughs> you don't get points, <laughs> for, <laughs> points yeah. for a stupid joke. <laughs> Yeah. So, so how come she got her? This other guy's got his picture of other women, and she's got a picture by herself. Well, that happened that way. There's a story here, David. There your, is your, something. Your paper ought to follow up on this. You have story. to ask uh, Kevin Connor because uh, Kevin says that is his aunt, but everyone knew her as Granny. Well, that's who we thought it was. <laughs> Mm -hmm. we're gonna say granny but kevin connor better come on the show yeah it's, well i think i think the reason kevin's getting all these is because he's related to all of them i think so well he may be on facebook <clears throat> unlike us he's on facebook and probably saw this yesterday bill and i are seeing these just it's like a rosarch test boom who's that who's that yeah yeah i told uh one of our anonymous viewers the other day if you remember, I said, you know, it's it, this is difficult to do cold. This is, we do this cold. We just look I've at this picture. I've turned the heat up. I don't know what the <laughs> bitch is. Oh, there we go. We got these. Yeah, for Ooh. sure. Better look at the kids because I sure can't get the parents. Looks like in the 40s. The, the viewer, the anonymous viewer, was related to the Ron family. I said, well, all everyone right. on the show is a Ron. Yeah, they're all Rons. And, uh, and Dallas, Randolph's. Is, Dallas, Randolph's. A lot of Randolph's. Have yeah, a lot of. David, you have a, initials on this and year. It looks like it's the 40s, 47 or so. 1943. Trying to get my flashlight to work because I'm, there we go. Hard to well, read. You light on your uh, the sun shining there. Alfred. Yeah, yeah. And just a second. Alfred, who? I'll be right back. Von Lankin. Oh, that's what it looked like. <laughs> Alfred Von Lankin. I think that would be. Well, obviously, it's related to the Von Lankins we know, but I can't uh, pinpoint it. You said 43? 1943. The way that uh, folks dressed back then was so church-like, if you will. That's the best way to put it. You, you put on your finest for a picture, and you put on your finest to go to church. Yeah, sharp-dressed family. Oh, very, very much so. Very yeah. much in style. Yeah. What? Yeah. Let me take a quick peek at this, David. That looks like the Von Lincoln family. Yeah. <laughs> Can you get a point for that? Do we need to pause for Mike? No. He's all right. He was just shutting the garage door. Becky's caused us a lot of confusion today. She's busy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, notice on, on the uh, notice on the mother's uh, dress, the is it called a brooch? Yeah, they used to. I've got several of those costume brooches at home that belong to my mother, my grandmothers. Hmm. They, they dressed up very uh, nicely for these kind of pictures. Is, and is the guy is the guy Neil von Lincoln? The, the name of the envelope is Alfred. Not not the dad, the son. Is that Neil? I don't know. I don't have the, and nobody has commented on this one. Well, I just did. Would that be like Lonnie's uncle or something? I think so. Bill was mentioning this, uh, the brooch. Yeah, and, Bill's into brooches. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I know Rick, but not well. Yeah, yeah. Um, made those. That's. Uh, yeah, that... I, I was looking at the stitching on the outfit over here on the left. It's kind of yeah, kind of interesting, like a little crochet or something. People back then didn't have the internet or a television, so they had time to do a craft and learn skills. Well, I didn't want to go to the next picture without you and give Bill an, an unfair advantage. Hmm. 
But on Bill inside a church. I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna know this next one. Is it okay? I get to go first. Uh, you may not know him from this picture, but you would know who he is. Give us the initials, and we'll get him. L.D. Les Dick. It is Leslie Dick. Oh, 19, Leslie Dick. 1944. I was going to say Les Dick right off the bat, but I just, I've never seen him smile like that. Me neither. <laughs> well, you never saw him that young. No. Good yeah, I mean, I, <clears throat> uh, I didn't Ronnie's know him well, uncle. but he didn't. Ronnie's know. uncle, boy, Grover Dick's son. Ronnie Dick's son. Ronnie Dick would get a charge out of that picture. Ronnie's class of 65 passed away. He liked his uncle. He talked about his uncle a lot. Oh, he? yeah. Well, he's kind of a little bit of a character, a little right. bit like Ronnie. Was Les, a little bit of Les a Dick was a town character. Mm -hmm. Grover Dick was a character. And Homer Carroll was not too far behind. Homer ranked right up there with him. Yep, he could hold his own with Les. Mm -hmm. Les think... ended up working for the state highway department, mm -hmm. didn't he? Yeah, he's in charge of the concrete mixers. <laughs> I had, a, I had a daughter close to my age. Tiffany? Tawanda? No, there was two. Oh, days. yeah, that's right. There were two oh, days. I've I've got Ronnie Dick's daughter was Tiffany. Yeah, there's two there was two Dick girls, weren't there? Well, Les had girls who I didn't know, but he was just saying one of them's close to him in school. Yeah, well, there's one back in the late 60s, early 70s, wasn't there? Les Hall's class, 69, 70. What's her name? Twyla? Twyla Dick. Oh, yeah. Well, one See, of his daughters is uh, Bunny Dick. Jan Smith. And um, maybe it's a different Dick family. Bunny was I think uh, Darla is uh, one close to my age. <clears throat> so there's a, there's, a, this is a, uh, Decalb, is this where they seed corn? Is this the machine in the main office? It looks do? like a bagger to me. Bagger, but I don't remember. The bagger, it didn't look like that. The bagger used to go down a conveyor belt, and it would dump the seed, and then it would stitch it up. And then uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Benner, it would stack them on a pallet, and my dad would drive off and stack them in the warehouse. Now that Orville looks, Prophet used to be on the bagger, too, Fred I, Carter. Is that, that looks like a decal seed well, bag. Well, I think it is a seed bag, but you know what? This is a grading tire. And so, this, but this operation is, this is very old here. This is gone now. Uh, this was gone. Was this the tower they had just, yeah, uh, just yeah. west? The grading, the main, just west? The grading tire, except... The grading tower simply ran the corn out. It but didn't see, bag it. This is bagging it. Well, like I say, remember when you walked in the main office? It was yeah. right there on a conveyor belt. Yes, it was. Yeah, that looks like a That's decal. That's a decal deer right there on that bag. Sure well, looks like. I'm just talking to Bruce Weatherford about decal this morning. We think one of the other old timers had passed away. This was 1944. Yeah. Yeah. Decal. Best of times. Dad worked there 15 years. Loved it. Bill Bennett, Hermoy, Barbie, Benner. Great yeah. guys. They all got Wal Waldo Ball, Delbert Grimm, the boss. Daryl Van Zandt. Daryl Van Zandt. This is the 50s, it looks like. Maybe 60s. 50s or 60s. Well, this might not be Tuscola. This is Janice Clark, 1955. Janice Clark. Art, well, there's Art, 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 Art Or Could be a Pasodum Clark. Remember? This might be the gal you had a date with. She doesn't look very happy. Well, that was after the date. <laughs> That's a post date photo. <laughs> that, that was after she went and sat down on the couch and said, What the hell was that all about? <laughs> That was that date, I think. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't all go well, Bill. <laughs> I'm 
I know. There's there's oh, a Harrison G. And, McCown. Yeah, Budge. Budge McCown, state's attorney back in the 50s. He fought, flew jets in the Korean War. Yes, he from did. From Newman, Illinois. He was a, he was a handsome, Boy, strong, he's a handsome fellow guy. there. Yes, he was. I, I've seen a picture of him, of him climbing into a jet during mm -hmm. the Korean War. This is 1952. A little trivia. Randy Hastings' middle name is named after this guy. Yeah, Bob Bob liked him a lot. I didn't know that. Harrison J. McCown. So what's the J stand for? I don't know, but Randy is is uh, Randall Harrison. Oh. It's his first name. He's named his Randy's middle name is his first right, name. Right. He said, uh, Budge had something on Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that was the payoff. Yeah, it was the payoff. We got a picture of Bob. Your kid after me. We got a picture of Bob coming up too. His daughter named Harriet. <laughs> okay. This is also looks like fifties. Nineteen fifty six. Initials. S L V is a, the name on the envelope. Victor. Vest. S L Victor. Well, that was a tie. Point to Engelhart. <laughs> Oh, that was a yeah. tie. Yeah, it was that I, was real close. I got and the SLV. I got the SL part. Yeah, well, great. <laughs> <laughs> I blurted out SL before you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like McElroy. You're so hungry for a victory. There's JR North Furniture Store. Point yep. for Mike. That was back about the 50s, right there, late 50s. Yeah. What maybe early sixties? What tells you that it was a furniture store? <laughs> well, I, I what think. Was your, what was your clue, Mike? Well, the biggest <laughs> clue was these lights up here. These fluorescent lights are usually for furniture stores. So you said nineteen fifties or sixties? Do you, Bill? Do you have a guess on when this? It could, even, it could even go up to seventy. Could I'm be, saying, I'm saying like, or, Mike the said furniture is seventy. He's already covered three decades, Bill. Well. You got a chance I, I, here. Get, get tighter, well, I'm going to say specifically, I'm going to say the 70s. I'm going to say 68. Mm. Well, now, maybe there are some later pictures in this envelope, but the envelope says 1948. Well, I was close. Gee, many. She had some good furniture. So I get a point for being closest. You know what? In 48, you still would have had a bridge lamp. Are those some of those bridge lamps? Can no, you tell? But they got the plastic covers. I love those plastic. I never took the, you ever try to take that plastic cover off the shade? Oh, they're hard to do. It took forever. Yeah. It took forever. <laughs> it's like leaving the plastic on your couch. Well, that's, <laughs> what's it there for? I mean, it's there to protect the shade. I'd say that this was somewhere around 10 o'clock in the morning. I think they Maybe a minute after I'm saying. <laughs> I'm going to be more specific. <laughs> But those lights give it away. Now, Philco wasn't there in the 70s, I don't think. I think what, is dry, moist what does this mean? Food. Dry, moist, and frozen food compartments. Well, that's called a refrigerator. Yeah. <laughs> I'm it's a little point. contradictory. Dry and moist. Yeah. Well, life's complicated and ambiguous. Oh, that is the wow. that's the Air North's uh, checkout counter. Mm. Look at that metal rib around there they stay stapled on who's the picture over there on the that's, desk that's that's the young that's a young north boy mm -hmm. back in the 40s that's quite a counter isn't it that is a counter that's a heck of a counter and you'll notice there's no way to get behind it and look at the phone the object on the left look is the, a phone for those how, that don't know yeah for the kids in the audience because we get a lot of those that's a telephone. Yeah. Mm. Cool picture. There's a Philco radio sitting on that table. People back before the big box stores and uh, local people bought their furniture at local stores. Local like stores. This. That was Absolutely. A, that was a successful business place. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, oven over that stove mm -hmm. man that's dad used to put up drapes for mrs north she'd get him to put up mm -hmm. drapes look at that couch that 
There's a giveaway. There's a Victorian. You don't see those in stores today. Yeah, I thought maybe this was a old-fashioned days display, but maybe oh, not. No, that's, that's 40. about a forty-eight. Yeah, era yeah. clock. Look at those. Look at those cabinets back there. Those are big Victrola or radio type things, aren't they, Mike? Yeah. Maybe. I think so. Possibly. Yeah. That couch looks like something we used to sit in a funeral home. Yeah, that's a tack green couch. Yeah, that's tack tack couch. Pretty cool. Betty Cunningham and the Cunningham family. Boy, left what a right. picture. Joellen, oh. Joellen upper left. That is sweet. Betty, Bill, Mike, Mike uh, ter 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 Teresa. No, the uh, Susan was the middle one. Mm -hmm. Teresa was the youngest. And the youngest one there would be. That's Ed. I like, That's John. You don't think it's Jeff? I think Jeff's. No, it's be, John, I think. Isn't Jeff older than John? I don't think so. But there's no mistake in Bill. He looks like he's oh. getting ready. He's looked like he's planning a. Bank. What a I'm, sweet picture! Bill's planning a bank. I'm ice. telling you, Betty Cunningham was a saint. She was. There ought to be a statue to her. Somewhere. There should be somewhere. She was all American. My God, how did she do that? She always had a smile. Yeah. You could wander. Any kid could wander in the house, and they did because you know there were no yeah. rule, there were no rules there. And she would fix. She'd fix your food, let you sit at the dining room table. And if she wasn't there. You just go ahead and help yourself to whatever was on the counter and walk out the other door. And she protected <laughs> those kids hugely. Doc Cunningham did not know anything that Bill did in high school. This could have been, but, honestly, it had been a wonderful movie. Oh, they, they could uh, have TV series, The Cunninghams. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, and oh, you think that's Susan? Susan's the middle one, isn't she? And Teresa's the youngest. I think that's Susan. But that looks like head, but I, I thought Jeff was older than no, I think it's John. You think John's older? Well, than... see, because Bill's here we go 65, 66, 67. Head was 71. Where was Jeff at? It looks well, like well, and then we've got Dan. Yeah, but Dan was the youngest one. Oh, yeah. Teresa and Dan aren't there. And Jeff's if that's head, then Jeff's not there. This is well, 1954. So we all agree that Betty Cunningham is a Catholic saint, and there ought to be a shrine to her somewhere in Tuscola. So that's the year that Bill and I started school at, in Tuscola. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, Dan, Dan's a little older than I am, but he wouldn't have been oh. by 54. Bill wound up going to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. <clears throat> due to some oversight. <laughs> His neighbor, Jimmy Wright, got him in. Well, that, if you look over across the street, the most famous thing of all is Rosie Claire's across the street. Look at that. Hanging on the, hanging on the outside, outside wall. Rosie said, if it ain't, if it ain't on the wall, it's on the floor. If it ain't on the floor, it's on the ceiling. And if it ain't on the ceiling, you don't need it. <laughs> yeah, I included uh, this picture specifically for that. I don't, I don't remember I knew Rosie's was over there. I don't remember ever seeing this. Oh, it was a mess. Oh, oh yeah. It See, was... those are are those garbage cans out front. Yeah, you couldn't walk down the. I think Bill uh, Bill Carson's mom used to work there, and she walked. She broke her arm walking down the aisle. I think you know you couldn't. You couldn't even maneuver in his store. It was just a, a junk store. Didn't he have a store over at Villa Grove too? Well, he he closed Tuscola and went to Villa Grove. He went to Villa Bill Grove was his hometown. Yeah. And that's the old Corn Belt Savings Loan right next to it before mm -hmm. uh, we put the uh, awning Looks on. like R.B. looking out the window. R.B. Caldwell, barely seen looking out the window. Then Hedinger's Hed Plumbing. Hedinger's Plumbing. Next to it. That is R.B., I think. Well, could be. Could be Clyde. <clears throat> that, and there's... Oh, uh, Dotson had an office in there somewhere. Charlie Dotson was over on the other side of that. That, yeah. Char the very, right very last building there is Charlie Dotson's mm -hmm. law office. And isn't isn't that the uh, building on the left? Isn't that where uh, Mrs. Armstrong had her apartment? Later? Yes. Yeah. She they put a lot of money in fixing that up. She, yep. That was nice. They were urban people, and in New York City or Chicago, there's nothing better than being in a loft downtown. What did they call her? Bracelets. Bracelets. She wore about forty of them a day. Hmm. Now they were. 
used to the urban life. Do I, we know I, these kids. You know, you know who got you know who got the Armstrongs to Tuscola, don't you? I do not. Paul Flesser, Paul and his wife uh, knew him out in Washington D.C. and I think uh, told him about Tuscola. That's my memory. Could be wrong. According to Kevin Connor, the boy on the right is Mark Phillips. Kevin, give Kevin about 100,000 points. Mm -hmm. I think Kevin's going to win the contest this week. Well, I guess so. Well, wait, at least he's what the prize is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Merry go round. I'm trying to figure out, does Kevin know who that boy is? He does. It's Mark Phillips again. I shouldn't have asked. You should. <laughs> See the lady back there? That's kind of towards Mitchell's. Oh, my God. There's oh, yeah. look. There's Larry Looselater over here. All right. Now, how'd you know that? I just made up. Oh, I was yeah. going to say. This is from the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah, but no. I know that shorter gal. Well, who I, is it? Well, I can't tell you. Well, I know all of them. <laughs> I can't tell you. What kind of answer is that? I know that gal, but I can't tell you. A couple of people said the uh, far right is Thelma Hatchell. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I know be, that, I know there are three, but I just can't be, tell you. Would that be uh, Harlan Hatchell's grandmother? What year is it? Well, this old fashioned day is probably in the 70s. This from the 60s. 70s. No, no. This is 60s. There's no date on the envelope. All it says is old-fashioned day. Okay, next picture. Next picture. I'm busy uh, getting the, my next cigar out. Oh. Well, let's, 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 oh, that's Phillips. That's Mark Phillips. I beat you. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know who the girl is? Well, that's uh, Teresa Cromwell. I don't know. That's not, gee. Now that is a wild guess. Oh, how do you know? Is that me leaning across no, the fence? I don't back? know who the girl is either. Mar Marilyn Klein says, is that his uh, sister, Tr uh, Terry? And Kevin says, no, Terry is older than him. Zero in on the couple on the far left over here. There you go. Zero, <laughs> zero in if you can. You recognize them? Well, I think it's me. Yeah. I think that's you? Yeah. No, it's not me. Back in the way in the background, that's the uh, at where Atkinson's uh, building is now. Used to be in the in the early '60s. It was Floyd Floyd uh, Grubbs, uh, Pontiac, and Buick. I think wasn't it? Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, or grocery free. In the '60s, Floyd Grubbs. Pontiac Buick. Oh, there we go. That's Williams. That's uh, Williams Gross or uh, restaurant. Yeah. This was a floozy that come to town. Well, Bruce opened that in the seventies, I think. Well, that's one of Bruce's employees, I think. But I don't know who it is. It used to be the Riley Cafe. Then it was Bruce Williams, uh -huh. and then was Malcolm Welsh had a restaurant there. Yep. Got her initials? Well, um, could be a Williams. Alice Boris thinks it's Mrs. North. Well, you know what? It looks like uh, it looks like Mrs. North. I th people thought it might be Millie Boris, but then they no, were, it's not Millie. She it's wore glasses and had kind of a white short hair. I think it, that looks like Mrs. North, as I remember. I think this is in the seventies. Yeah, I don't know when it is. 60s. Nope. Okay, Sandy Von Lincoln in the middle. <clears throat> yep. This is in the 60s, late 60s. This is the bank. She worked out at the First National Bank. Uh, what's his name owned it? Earl the Pearl. Earl the Pearl Van Steen House. This gal. We know that gal on the left. Yeah, I know. Sandy. Okay, give us the names, Jamie. 
Sandy was a classmate, 65. I don't have all the names. Uh, Sandy, Sandra Ritchie. Right, Sandra Ritchie. That's, uh, that's the only name I've got. Mary Lottie Von Lincoln. And the gal on the left, we should know. The gal on the right, we should know. Well, we should know she them all. She kind of looks right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we should know them all. Sandy never changed. Between the two of us, we've dated all of them. Well, I don't think so. So this is at FNB? Yes, first. Which first is the vault. Now the vault. The vault now. In the vault, yeah. And that vault door's still there. Yeah, the vault door's still there. But nobody's got the combo. They don't? No. Don't lock it. Is that Phillips again? <laughs> <laughs> that is Becky Carpenter. This is all in the 70s, by the way. Point goes to Bill. Thank you. That's Jean and Tracy's daughter, Becky. I'm going to tell you, can I tell you an old-fashioned day story if you got a second, David? Yeah. Or a couple minutes. Bob was in charge of it, and uh, they, they, ABC Chamber gave it to me. And they said, nothing against Bob, but he's, he's spent way too much money on trophies. Bob bought a trophy for everybody. Right. I was in charge of it about 70. Bob liked, Bob liked trophies. Yeah, everybody got a trophy. He said, they won't come if you don't give them a trophy. So I took it over. And uh, I worked hard to get these groups to come. I got the Air Force Academy, uh, uh, Rantoul to send a band, U of I to send a band. But this is a Bill Ingram story. Bill knows it. <laughs> I worked hard to get this group out of Champaign. Paul Vallandigham, they were, they were Daniel Boone. They wore skin, skin, uh, coonskin hats and shot these big muskets. And he said, I, I got to pay him a dollar a shot. And I said, okay, no more than 50 shots. He said, okay. So I worked hard to get him. I'm down at the hospital watching the parade go by. <laughs> and Bill's there with his little boys. And they come by and they stop and the coon, coonskin rascals fire off their guns and Bill's kids start crying. <laughs> And Bill goes, what idiot had them in the parade? <laughs> I've never forgiven Bill for that. That oh, was in the 80s, I think. 70s, 70s, 70s. Late 70s. It had to be very 78, late. 78, 78. Hey, do you know who the boy is in the picture? Well, that's this is right out of uh, Oklahoma, with a, Surrey with a French on top. I didn't look at the boy. I looked at 78. I'm going to say a Wetzel, but I don't know. No, I don't know. Well, the uh, folks on the on Facebook think that it's Vince Gailey. Could be. The Vinny, Vincer, <clears throat> Vinny Rooney. Couldn't prove it by me. No. Look at those trophies. There's Orville Fry and the striped seersucker. Nice outfit. Nice outfit, Orville. There's the uh, Mr. Uh, these guys won the car awards. Yeah, well, that's Ralph Allen. That's Orville Fry. Ralph Allen who used to have good old cars down there in his body shop. The tall guy. That's not Floyd Grubb, is it? No. Oh, no. He wasn't that tall. And it's not Al Carson either. Oh, wait. You know who the cheerleaders are? I'm sitting here. Well... They've got on the wrong letters for EIU. Where is that from? I don't know. Carlton. I don't recognize the girls. Janet and Bobby. Bobby McKinney. I have no idea. I'm just reading their shirts. Janet. Janet Stroll. <clears throat> I don't know. That's so not anyway, Janet Stroll. No, it isn't. She, her hair's not blonde. We give up. I don't, I don't have names. Well, this is uh, Mrs. Crady is a short lady in the front. Elsie. Elsie Crady, mother of Debbie. Your classmate. My classmate. Elsie worked at Save More, too. Mm hmm this is outside which one of the catalog stores? Western that, Auto. Western Auto. Who owned that? Was it Shinneman? Who? What was his name that owned that? Ooh. Yeah, the guy in the that Ed Shinneman. Ed Shinneman sold to Higgins. Sold to Jim Higgins. Higgins. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. 
Well, that's Mr. Flume. That's Walt, Flume, Mr. Flume. Walt Flume on the right. They had a little store downtown where uh, Gambles was. You should get the woman on the left. Uh, it's what I was trying to do, and I just can't can't pull it out of my hat. Who is it? Got initials? According, initials. B M for initials. B M. B as in boy. M as in Mary. Hmm. Bonnie. Nope. Barbara Moody. Oh, that's Kathy Chaplin's mother. Right. Don Moody's wife. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's the Barb Moody on the left. <laughs> and that's Don Moody on the right. That is Don Moody. I'll be darn. Just his daughter was just here. I had to go lower the garage door so my wife and Kathy Chaplin, his daughter, could go see the play in Sullivan. Poor Don's going through a, he's in his 90s, yeah. still alive, but he's in the hospital right now. He had a fall. He's at that age where they're day by day. He's a wonderful guy. Great guy. Don's a great guy. Yeah. Best wishes to him. Hope he Best wishes. Us, uh, he's like the rest of us. He wants to stay home and be independent as long as he can. He's been independent. Well, at some point. Mowing the grass, gets his boat out, goes fishing. Goes to McDonald's to see his buddies. There's not many buddies left for Don, he says. Oh, boy. That's, That's Tracy Carpenter. Is that Anderson on the right, Ted Anderson? Yep. Now, there's uh, that's an interesting picture, because if you look at the top of the picture, you see the Greyhound bus line. Well, it used to stop there. It used to stop right there. And then and Mills Pharmacy, it would stop right there. Then we had a little loan company in there. Continental. I bought my first Lincoln Continental from them. <laughs> joke. And, of course, there's the uh, Douglas Hotel. Hotel that was the roof I was on that I managed to throw a piece of hot That's tar a, onto Pete Kelsey's couch. Right. And there's about a 60 something Chevy. 63? No. What's that last uh, sign on the building back there? And uh, entrance. Entrance to. Entrance. Uh, Gus is probably. I don't yeah, know. This must be the candy kitchen. Looks like the facade's coming off there. That's that old. Wasn't that green? That that old uh, metal yeah. facade that used green, to be on there. That green plastic there. Now I say that looks like Tracy. It may not be. It the face might be a little too too much. Yeah, that may not be Tracy. I agree. But that is Anderson. That's Ted Rooney. 64 that Chevy, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't remember Williams Cafe, so I don't know when they closed. Well, it used to be used to be Riley's uh -huh. Cafe. Bruce Williams had a when Riley's closed, I think Bruce threw one in. His wife was the cook down there. I was in there one day eating when Bruce brought in a bunch of meat and she yelled at him, says, You're not bringing me your old meat that you can't sell. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> her marriage wasn't perfect either, was it? Well, yes, it does. But she was proud of her restaurant. She was a good cook. I Merry think, go round. I think Malcolm Malcolm Welsh, Malcolm Welsh put a restaurant in there later. Remember Malcolm Welsh's restaurant? He was good cook. He put, Malcolm was a good cook. Ferris wheel, right in the middle of town. Yep. It's a big deal. Those were the good old days. Oh boy. Oh man. This looks like about 69, maybe. Little Thunderbird sitting up there, Cadillac with the big tail lights that's in the back. 50, that's a fifty-eight. Yeah, four pretty girls sitting there. And Bill's looking at the cars. Sixty-three Ford, maybe turning in there to park. The T-Bird's a fifty-eight or fifty-nine. Well, I got to tell you, these girls are from out of town. Yeah. And Mike should know every one of them because he was with I do. each it, one of them it's, once. It's sad. <laughs> it's sad. <laughs> I don't know. Should I give half a point to Bill for knowing that those girls are from out of town? How many for knowing that I dated them all? <laughs> well, Sandy Cruzan has their names. Seriously, they're Villa Grove girls. Is that a cost mm -hmm. on the left? No. Sure? No. 
Say Janice Goss. That's Jones, I think. Huh? Jones. That's not Janice. Okay. I did date Janice, by the way. I did too. Okay. Yes. Sandy yes. says from left, Lorna Teeter, Karen Utterback, Debbie Kappas, and Jackie Buker. They must have been older than us. Well, because I don't remember those never, names. Never stopped us, did it? No. Harold Van Deventer uh, says, sad to say, but I remember all the girls, but I'm looking at the cars and dreaming. Well, that's kind of... That's yeah, the cars... Uh, there's a cat. There, see that caddy back there? That's about a... Big tail lights. 50, 54? That's a mid-50s mid Cadillac. 53, 4, 5 Cadillac. Yeah. The Ford pulling in is a 64 or 5. No, that's why I don't crop these pictures to you know like this because the background a lot of times is as interesting to us as anything. There's yeah. the back of Kenny Hogue's restaurant, right? I believe. No, I don't recognize those girls. Oh, there's Mrs. oh my Housen. goodness! There we got all of. Well, them. I've got one for sure. Mrs. Beasley on the right, Sadie that's Beasley. My mother is the second one in. Is yep. Bill's mother. Third one in is uh, Dorothy Buck Starrett. Dorothy Starrett, a Hausman girl. I'm not sure about the fourth one. This is Carpenter's. Yeah, Carpenter's. On Sadie, old -fashioned Sadie Beasley, days. Bob Beasley's mother. Sadie Beasley. God, she, she had a great sense of humor. Mrs. Englehart, uh, who was her son? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, his dad worked as Carpenter's also. Mm -hmm. Gene Carpenter was uh, like a lifesaver to your family there for a while. Well, somebody had to take us in. You wouldn't. Well, I would have. Dad would have let you get a decal, maybe. Yeah. I don't know who the woman on the left is. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Is that Kaiva Hauser? Remember it worked at uh, Hellers, Hellers? Hellers? I don't know. Might be Kaiva, but I can't tell. Sue Cook Carter says, my grandma Pauline Cook on far left. Pauline Cook. Okay close and how many houses were there 11 kids brother and sisters oh lord i don't know 10 several 10 11 12 yeah bunch a lot of comments on facebook on this so if you want to read the more of the stories you can uh see remembering did anyone get my mother what's that did anyone name my mother which one is she she's the second one from the right she's standing on a step because she was very short yeah well, i just posted these yesterday so i don't see um there's one that uh they called dobie the, yeah it's dorothy stare yeah um sadie yeah they got sadie but um what was your mom's nickname? What'd she go by? She didn't. Just Roberta. Robo? <laughs> robo. You know, we had a robo wash. Remember yeah, Larry Allen? Had Larry a... Allen had a robo. <clears throat> I'm a sister, Roberta. Her, her nickname was Sissy. Roberta Englehart was uh, down near Golconda. What was her town? Rosie Claire? No, she was Golconda. Golconda. Yeah. She's engaged to be married, but not to Clarence Englehart. Hmm. And your That's dad, interesting. Your, I didn't know that. I thought your dad came in, swooped her off her foot, and that was it. Well, he swept her off her feet, but she'd been <laughs> off her foot. She only had one leg. Off her... <laughs> <God>. <laughs> well, that's the story. Never I, mind. Well, that's the story I thought of. Uh... I've always heard that he saw her and said, That's the one, and and she changed her mind. Well, it, aren't they fortunate that they had me? Well, that was the that was the love of their life, wasn't each other? It was you. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, there's Pat Hill. Pat uh, Hill, oh, second left, I yeah. think. Patty Phillips. Patty Phillips, I think. It is. It's Pat. And that's Mrs. Mrs. Hatchell on the right. Yeah. Thelma. Thelma. That's Harlan's uh, mother. You think? No, I was going to say grandmother. George. Be George's grandmother. I think. I think so. Well, it appears to be an older woman, 
And these pictures would Harlan would be a young guy, so would George. Well, Harlan would be who's an, the other brother? George and Harlan and Everett. Everett. So this looks like 60 again, 60s or early 70s. 60s. Uh, early 70s. 60s. Got it. I'm sure. Harry paid on the far right. I don't think so. You don't? No. Kind of looks like he. Look that dark oh, glasses. you're right. This is a computer. I don't think Harry ever dealt with anything. No. This, yeah. this guy, right? second from the left, looks like a politician. Yes, he does. Well, this this envelope, these photos are, um, the envelope says General Telephone Company. Yeah, it looks like. No, we don't want to deal with. Oh, that's a foreman in the middle. That was your mother-in-law's boss. Mm-hmm. Bill's uh, mother-in-law worked at the phone yeah. company for years. Yeah, that's Mr. Foreman. I think they were taking a tour. Eric Alexander said Ron Swanson, second from right. You know, you ought to have... Eric. I think it was Dean Foreman was the... I think that was his first name. There's E. Dean. It looks like on Foreman. Yeah, Dean Foreman. Well, you had Eric Alexander, Chubb Connor... Kevin and, Connor. And Connor. Kevin Connor on this program, Bill and I could retire. Yeah. Pee Wee Cunningham. Pee Wee's in the back there. I think this is probably the some kind of grand opening for the phone company. That building is pretty new there. The building was probably built in the 60s, wasn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> Now, the uh, envelope says 1974. Or 70s. No, the building's there before 74. No, it's, there's something different here. Um, well, this no, the building was there in 1970, I know. I was Some of the dresses look like maybe old-fashioned days or something. It looks like Pee Wee's outfit is very similar to this woman in the back. Yeah. So I don't know what's that about, but... The young girl looks like she's the seventies. Yeah, with that wide white belt. Yeah, and the turtleneck. Maybe they had uh, implemented some sort of new technology. Time warp. Time yeah, warp. Time warp. This is the time warp. Yeah. Well, that's the other side of the building. Is that? That's my mother-in-law. That's your mother-in-law. There's yeah. Gene Serma, who worked. Yeah. At, this is the phone company. So, it is a phone company, and there's Marie Beard that just passed away at one hundred and three. One hundred three, Marie Beard. And look at that, 1974. Yeah. Is that? Oh, look. That's, uh, that's Marie Beard. I know. We'll go back a little bit. Yeah, that is Marie. Mm -hmm. Zero in on the woman on the left there in dark. Yeah, that's Andrea's mom. She, she sure is. Smile. She tried to smile. I don't know. She's a good looking woman. <clears throat> yeah, she was a pretty woman. And where are they from, Bill? Where did uh, the Southern service... Illinois? Everybody came up in Southern Illinois. Everyone came from Southern there Illinois. There were just no jobs down there, were there? <clears throat> well, there were jobs, but this was just too good to be true up here at the plant. Tuscola's always been too good to be true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's the mainframe right there and the toll test board. Well, our pictures this week are sponsored by Trust Bank and Elite Builders. Well, thank you, both of you. They account for our salary, Bill. Mm -hmm. Who's waving there? Oh, wait, is that Carol Martin? Carol Shuey? Might be Carol Shuey. Carol Shuey Martin. With the long blonde hair. And glasses. Well, looks just like her, doesn't it? Yeah, well. Well, actually, in a way it does. In a way it does. Her hair's a little shorter now, but... Uh... Could be a hill well, also. Might be a little bit. Could no, a it's, a, it's a shoey. That's her. I it's think Carol. it's Carol. Who's waving here? We should know the waver. Who's waving? She was waving to you, I think. It was. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> it, was, it was real. Okay. More phone people. They're showing what happens when your phone disconnects. So you need a big pair of gloves. Yeah, yeah, you get shocked. There's another one of those wide white belts. That was popular back in the 70s. Back yeah. in the day. That and uh, Nehru suits. 
Nehru suits were big. Looks like Bill Taylor, maybe. One Bill the... Taylor worked at the uh, telephone company. That's a young Bill Taylor. Oh, this is uh, 1993. <laughs> this is a photo of, of wow, photo of a photo. And the envelope just says Jim Strody for plate. So I don't know what this was taken for. Um, mm. And Lori, Lori Ann Matthews says, uh, obviously not Uncle Bud, but sure resembles him. Well, I don't know who the people. You say are. Jim Strode? Strode. That, that's the name on the envelope. I don't. S T R O D E. Yes. Mm. That's what the picture was taken for probably. I don't. But it's it's a picture of an older picture. Well, that's your old United Church of Christ, isn't it? Yeah, that's the um, corner of Reverend, Pembroke, isn't it? Reverend Jones's church. Back, yeah. It looks like about Reverend Jones's era, 19. That's, well, let me look at it again. This is the side shot. This is, something's wrong with that picture. Yeah, it does. Is that well, it? No, is that the, that's the wrong church? That may not be a Tuscola church. No, the, the, it says Charles Henderson and son, Arcola, Illinois. So that's probably an Arcola church. I've never been in that one. No. Well, you've never been in any church, as we can tell from photos. <laughs> That's the Wetzel. Wetzel. Shorty. Yeah. Shorty Wetzel. Good picture. Yeah. Let me see if I got any Why's first name? comments on that. I'm sure oh, you got some on it. Laura Van Cleve says it's her uh, grandma and grandpa. Ed, Edda, Edda, and Shorty Wetzel. Hmm. Well, I know where Tuscola. that is. Brand new Tuscola High School, about 1959. Yep. Brand new. The envelope says 1958 and then question mark. Well, no, they, in 1959, in mid year, I think uh, I've talked to. Uh, Libby Fox, my sister-in-law, remembers the day, and I talked to a couple of people. They just loaded up books, all of them loaded up books, and took off from the old North Ward to transfer it out one day. Everybody just... Now, what on. there, isn't there an extension been added on over here on the left? Yes. They played football earlier. They played football for a good three, four years on that field. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look at that track. Yeah. Probably Cinder. It when, was Cinder. When I ran high school track, I ran the hurdles. And if you happened to hit a hurdle and fall down, you were picking cinders out of your leg for, for a month. For a month. Yeah. Good cool. view of Tuscola back in the day. There's it a is. You, you see the courthouse. Now, if you look back. Grain elevator. See the, see the football field there? <laughs> There's a picture of Bucko hitting me with a clipboard. No. If you look. <laughs> See that white building at the uh, west end of the football field? That used to be the entrance. That used to be. That's where you came in. That's where you came in. That's where you got hot dogs. And you got taffy apples. And hot dogs. Yeah. I've delivered taffy apples from the candy kitchen to there. Yeah. Yeah, those are concessions. Today, it's a storage. Yeah. Huh. Neat picture. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. I would say they started playing football there in about 56, is my guess. Well, These were the cheerleaders from 56. They the all got together. They all got together. Yeah, we know her. Yeah, I can't place it. This is some sort of woman's club, but I don't know if it's, t I don't think it's Tuscola Women's Club. It was the original Red Hat Club, only it was called the Multicolored Hat Club. I see. Well, I was going to give you a point for saying Women's Club, but then you said you don't think it's Tuscola's Women's Club. 
And the envelope says Tuscola Women's Club. Wow. Then it's very old because 1954. I don't know. 54. I just started school. Spring luncheon. Spring luncheon. Where is this taken? Uh, church, well, church. It's some church. The second lady in is Lucille Burns. Is Lucille Burns? I think you're right. We yeah. should know the fourth lady in. I I can't tell you who that is. If this gal here would turn around, I wonder if it's like Carol McCarty or somebody real young in 1954. Well, half of them look like the teacher that paddled me in the third grade with yeah, the, well, with the board. Some of them should have hit you upside the head. I, we know her. I just know that. Yeah, I know. Is Rita Roderick there? Is she she whaled. I don't see Mrs. Roderick. She whaled Looks like it was hat day at the women's club. It yeah. was. It was special. She beat me like a rug. Oops, here we go. There's your brooch, Bill. That was the thing. This lady's Boy, how clean can you be? What a picture. God, does a woman have any wrinkles? Initials. He air, he used to airbrush them. Make sure I got the right envelope here. Hmm. Looks like the 40s. Hmm. Well, I can't read the writing on the on the uh name i don't know if you guys can uh my background did not let me hold it up well the wj could be could be wood could be whole put that let us read hmm could we read it well when i hold it up it disappears on the oh that's the screen with my my screen hmm. thing 1945 well, i got the year right <laughs> not wanting to brag or anything no no or beg for a point yeah i think it's if, right. this is wj hole would that be wib's uh wife uh In the 40s that would oh, be he, his mother well he graduated he graduated in 39 something like that 1945 yeah 38 39 could be his, could be both his mother and Gail Hole's mother. Actually, it could be. They were both born about 20, 21, 19. Yeah. So 45, they'd been. Oh, and Tim Hole should respond to this. Tim, Tim did. He says, Esther Hole, my dad's mom. There you go. So we got it right. We got it right. Yeah. Just sheer deduction, like Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Just good detective work. I think this is a cool picture. Oh, I think we're in this picture. Yeah, this is. Hang uh, on now. We got it. This is 40s. You may have to close in a little bit. We got to see who these coaches are. Well, this is 1951, maybe. But yeah. um, this is original something Little League, I'll bet. 51. I'm four years old. So these are. I think this is a great picture. Oh, it is a great All-American. All-American. Oh, that's... Americana. Right there, stop. The guy that's with glasses... Little. The guy with glasses, white hair, is Pat Shanahan. Man, what a picture. Ed Maddox. Look at all the pants cuffed. Yeah. Keep on going. Looks like something out of Little Rascals. Go back to the other end. Chuck Connor might be in this picture somewhere, but the bond is. I bet he's got names on it. The See his big boy? Yeah. That could be uh, from Olin from. Yeah, I do have a lot of comments on this picture. Good. Carol Howden says, Coach Kneeling is Bob Boyd. 
And there's Jim Hal right over his cap is her husband, Jim Hal. Yeah, it is Jim, isn't it? I'll be she bought Jim and Frank their shoes and their gloves. Huh. Jim I used his glove through high school. Frank was a pitcher and Jim first base. They had an all-star game and Frank was picked but fell out of, of a tree and broke his arm. So Jim replaced him. <laughs> Jim and Frank went on to play in the merchants team after high school. Jim still played first base. Tony Hausman says, my dad, Jim Hausman with no hat behind coach. Yeah. Look, how you look at it, it looks like Jim, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That is Jim. This, these guys wound up being class of 55, wow. 55, 56. This is uh, the Tuscola, Tuscum, we call it. Tuscum Little League began, and you wrote the book. Yeah. Did she mention a Pat Shanahan? No. Um, Donna still says the coach standing up looks like it might be Alvin Ashwell. Maybe over here. Mike, where's that fence? Is that at the Little League Diamond? Well, I have to go back again a little bit. Blow it back in. Let's see. Down the park? Well, I'm not, I don't see any houses out there. Well, this is, like I said, 19, looks like 51. 51 is what it looks like. Well, see, Tuscum Little League started in about 51, 52, Mr. Caldwell. Some of these same people. Mm -hmm. Have to get our Little League book out. I got one upstairs. <clears throat> I didn't think to bring it down. But go down the line again, because these are all Jim Hausman's classmates of 55. That's why I said that one looked like Larry Little, I think. Well, Larry was about 54. He could be. So that could even be Junior Decker. I said old and from. Third, fourth one. Chubb Connors is probably in this one. See, that kid, that's... That kid with the, the blonde guy with glasses, I think it's Pat Shanahan. Uh, is that Bill Ware? Looks like a wear. Looks like Bill Ware. In a white shirt. With a look at telephone pole right behind. The boy him. standing next to, is standing up completely. It's he's on the right. I think that's it looks like a wear. Looks like Bill. He graduated in 57, I think, or 56, mm -hmm. 57. Keep going. Maybe Ronnie Schultz is in this thing. Ronnie Schultz. Bill Nisbet would be in this picture. Hmm. Great picture. Great, yeah. great Con picture. Is that Chubb Connor? I think Chubb Connor should be in that picture. Well, Chubb hasn't weighed in on it. He and will. He, he's weighed in on a lot of a lot of the pictures. Well, almost all of them. That's Bill Ware at bat. And that is the start of the Tuscola Little League thing. Yeah, and that that's is. Bill Ware. Yeah. Went on to be a great football player. And, and that's Mr. R Caldwell. R.B. Caldwell yeah, R. B. With, with his hat turned backwards. Yeah, he was a hippie. Is R.B. Caldwell. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Great picture. Right? That's classic. Isn't those, that those, ought to, those ought to be in your paper, David. Those are, those are classic, never-before-seen Tuscola pictures. That's true. And is that part of the amphitheater or just bleachers? Oh, this is a little league diamond. That's a, the original yeah. where it still is today. Yeah. yeah, that was the first diamond. The one where you're hitting out the southwest corner. It, center field is out in the southwest corner. That's looking east, south, right. east, southeast a little bit. <sighs> Parkview's not there yet. Who's the guy behind RB, by the way? I don't know. Zero in on RB. Hope Joe's watching this one. Is that? Uh, no yeah. idea. Joe hasn't weighed in yet. Yeah. I mean, this is really old picture. That is. That's classic. RB was a whale of a baseball player himself. Uh-huh. Look at that short waistcoat. Yeah. Yeah, the Eisenhower. <laughs> Eisenhower jacket. Jacket. Okay. Great photo. There's Tuscola Police Department. Tuscola's oh, finest. That's the auxiliary in the back. Bob, 
<laughs> front row, front row. There's Gene Wiggle who rose to be uh, Doug County Sheriff Brinkley. Second, second from right is Gene Wiggle. Gary, Gary Brinkley, who wound up being uh, the head of the University of Illinois Police Force. Middle, and there's his uncle down here, one of the Brinkley brothers. Harold. Harold, you think? Yeah. And the back right, second one in is Bob Hastings, auxiliary force. Yeah. This is uh, Joe Swihart. And that's uh, Terry Stevens. Terry Stevens in the middle. And down He's to the police chief. Down to the left was Jim. Is that uh, Jim? Uh, Harbaugh? Possibly. Yeah, Lisa Weber White says uh, front left, my uncle Harold Brinkley, third from mm -hmm. bottom left, Gary Brinkley next to him, Jack Wellens. No, that's uh, Gene mm -hmm. Wiggle. Um, Wiggle? Yeah, that's Gene. That's Gene, second from the right. Yeah, that's when Bob wanted to drag me, break into that house. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <The> security. <laughs> Amber McCartney says her dad, Gordon Goodpasser, top row, far right. Okay, right. Bob uh, tried to get Greg Hayes, Greg Skinner, and Bill to break in this one house. That I'll be right behind you. <laughs> Barney Leck, uh, Nicole Ushekel says Barney Lecker, uh, sitting second from left, USI security. I'll be right. Wasn't well, Swihart, uh, he was retired from Champaign Police Department. Now, Bill, the house was, it used to be a boarding house, mm -hmm. white two-story house. Right. On the daggy. Right. And uh, he wanted you and Greg to go bust it for, well, what was the criminal activity? Well, there was some shenanigans. Well, of course. Can you be more specific as to what shenanigans? Well, no, not really. I, some <laughs> Back in those days, in it fact, was, they it, didn't even like to talk about it. Well, it was illegal back then, but now it's legal. Yes, very much so. Okay. You wouldn't Great. go breaking into a house for it. Looks like Wayne Neal up or right. It is Wayne Neal. Is that Shirley Neal in the middle? No. I don't think it is. Is either. this Wayne's family? How do you, what is this about? I don't know. I don't think about Wayne's family. This is Wayne doesn't even look like his family. This is 1943 Earl Neal family. And that's Wayne Neal in the upper right. Yep. That's Wayne's so brother, they, sister, parents. I didn't, and I didn't know he had a brother or sister, did you? Or two sisters. I don't know. Gary would have to explain this. Gary should know all these. Gary Neal well, says back row, Jim Neal, Jane Neal, Wayne Neal, his dad. Front row, Leah Schultz, cousin, and Earl and Zone Neal, grandparents. Hmm. Lived at 101 East Scott. The Neal Motor Company Studebaker dealership was located behind on Main Street. Peggy was Uncle Jim's and Aunt Wanda's daughter. She was a nurse. Now, wait a minute. 101 Scott? East Scott, yeah. And the Studebaker dealership was right behind on Main Street? That's what he says. Or she says. Well, Scott Street, Studebaker, you're talking about the uh, Scott Street's where Cunningham's lived. It's where it's um, Casey's. It'd be... Is there a Studebaker dealership right there across the street? That was Bruce Williams across the street to the north. And uh, Seibolt's Florist, Florist on, on the, the south. south. Maybe that's where, you know what? That, that may, that oh, makes I sense. know what it is. That's where Bruce Weatherford got his love of Studebakers. He lived right next to the dealership there. That might be it. Um, Floyd Miller had a building. Oh, that's down a block. That's where the, that's fire, down fire, block. That's, that's where the fire station is. Yeah. Fire station is it's a big white building. It was a two story. It, yeah. It was actually kind of that gray stucco stuff. Dietrich bought that and 
uh, donated to the city or sold the city for their first fire station? Well, the funny part about that is I think at one time, I think Floyd Miller owned that building. And I'm not for sure that Bus Martin didn't buy it, too. Well, I know Denny bought it. We stored furniture in there from yeah. Southern Illinois at one time. And he wound in up the mid fifties. Yeah, it needed torn down, and Denny wound up Studebaker sell, sell to the city. You think he sold it there, or they they claimed it was right on uh, Sale Street or Main Street? We will go investigate this afternoon. Did you say Main Street? The city Baker did Main Street. She said we'll have to go and look. Well, it, it is just one one lot down to the south. Yep. There's, that's Hawaii. That's Hawaii with yeah. David Porter on vacation. And that's uh, how do we do? Here's Tom Grubb just for a second. He did pretty well. Hmm. Hunk. What are you doing? We was talking about Floyd Grubb. We're on the air. We're just at the end of it, and we were talking about your dad's. Uh, well, we got you on. We're live right now. Your dad, your dad, where the corner grocery was, he sold, was it Pontiac and Buick? Yes. Pontiac and Buick. How long did he, when did he close that up? Or 60s? <laughs> 64. And we just had a question about uh, a Studebaker dealership on, on uh, Main Street, right off of uh, Scott Street. Oh. Floyd Miller had a car dealership there, but I don't remember a Studebaker dealership anywhere. You know where, where Bruce, you know Bruce Williams' grocery store was there, and uh, across the street was Seibold's. We're going to have to look that up, David. Yeah. You don't. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> you can put them on speaker, Mike. Here, I'm going to put you on speaker. We're we're live here, and David uh, Porter here. Just a second. I can even I could probably put you on. Uh, if I knew how to do it, I could even put you on. Uh, you care if I put you on speaker phone? Okay. Just a second. Okay, this is uh, Tom Grubb, class of 63, great football player. His, well, that, that remains to be uh, determined. <laughs> his, my my uh, uh, sophomore year, Tom was a senior. One of the great games at Tuscola, we beat our Cole in the last play of the game, and Roger Chapman ran a touchdown back. And Tom's dad came to a big celebration and he wrote a saying down and he framed it. And most all of us players still have that frame quote from your dad. That would be true. Reach, be reach true. down. It's there. If you just reach far enough, what was the. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I don't have it. Didn't know where I was going to be online. So I don't have any idea. <laughs> well, the other thing, you're, the other thing, your dad. Yeah. yeah, it was uh, to that effect that, we all have that ability. We just have to search down there, get it, bring it up, and put it into play. And that's what we're doing here on this podcast, Bill and <laughs> I are just reaching. I also, I also remember a little league game where I was a uh, ten-year-old. You were twelve. I pitched against Paris in a little league all, uh, playoff game, and your dad came up, and they were big kids. And your dad came up, and he said. Don't forget, they put their pants on one leg at a time, just like you. I remember your yeah. all your dad's quotes. Yeah, yeah, he he was a, a gem for things like that. Yeah, I I later had an example like that when I was uh, in the U.S. Navy and working for a very influential Navy captain who uh, he and I were working with the chief of naval operations on a project, and and it got kind of wonky and. And he said the same thing to me, unrelated to my dad, but he said, you know, Tom, remember, even though he's a chief of naval operations, he just puts his pants on every morning, just like you do. You know, Tom, and, ever yeah. since that, I've always tried to put both my legs in at the same time. 
That's that's my line. My I I wrote that in a column. I, I a, David's mad. I jumped on his line. I had because uh, I, I had a my intern in the state board of education. That's what my boss told me about the politicians I was rubbing elbows with. He said they put their pants on one leg at a time, you know, like the rest of us. And ever since then, I put them. I sit down on the bed and pull them on two legs at a time, just. Yeah. Just to remind myself that I don't have to be like everybody else. Dave and I are what we call unique. I have to sit down to do that now. This is Bill Engelhart. Thomas, you got anything brilliant to add to our podcast here as we tie it up? Well, I wasn't I wasn't watching Mike. I to be honest with you, I was gonna call you uh on a personal basis, just to ask you uh about a point of law. Well so, can I can I can I call you back in about two minutes? Yeah. Yeah, sure. No, no issues, but it's great to talk to you. We do watch your program occasionally and, uh, it's always fun. I find that, uh, I feel like I should know a lot more than I do about your, about Tuscola. I just, it kind of bothers me that I don't have better memory about all that, but you guys no. do a great job. I mean, it's a, it's a great service for Tuscola. And I'm, I'm proud to know you guys. Well, thank you, oh, well. And, and you'll learn things on this show. The trouble is, it may not always be true. Well, it's close. <laughs> Tom? Well, yeah. Close only counts the part she was an grenade, so you guys and atomic, and atomic bombs. David is David is sitting there with a backdrop of Hawaii. Tom, oh, yeah. Tom uh, uh, moved to Hawaii, sold yachts. Were you on the big island or the main island? Well, that's always a question. I was on the island of Oahu where uh, Honolulu and Waikiki is, but it's not uh, topographically or geographically the largest island. <laughs> but most people think of it that way because that's where the bulk of the population yeah. is. Tom was there for many years, loved it, and uh, came home and he had a license plate that said, uh, what did it say, Aloha? <laughs> 50? Well, yeah, yeah. I actually had several different Hawaiian license yeah. plates and they're hard to get now. But <laughs> I, I seem to have created a monster. <laughs> that monster's eating me. I can't get my Hawaiian plates anymore. Well, anyway, so David's in Hawaii right now. If you watch today's podcast, you'll, you'll, it'll bring back memories of Hawaii because he's, He's either in Hawaii or he's got a backdrop and he's faking it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll call you back in uh, just a, about five minutes, Tom. Sorry to interrupt your show. Oh, don't no, worry. we're glad you did. <laughs> hey, everybody, everybody's falling asleep, Tom. You, you, you brought us back to life. <laughs> okay, well, aloha then, I guess, is an appropriate way to sign off. Oh, okay, from... aloha. Good to see. Good to hear from you, Thomas. You know. Okay. See ya. Hmm. I thought maybe he was watching the program. Was going to tell us about his dad, Floyd. Now I realize this isn't live. This is, no. So he. That's why he took. The that call. just happened to be a coincidence. That was a coincidence. Yeah. 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 No, we're pre-recorded, but we are unscri unscripted. So if you can, really can you tell that? Is that obvious? Yeah. So just a happy little accident, as uh, yeah, as the painter Bob Ross would might say. Yeah. <laughs> well, I enjoyed this today. I got to see a picture of my mother I hadn't yeah. seen before. I love those yeah. baseball photos from '51. Yeah, yeah, that baseball. You ought something to, else. You ought to, That's that's worthy of something. Was Great that uh, was that also taken by uh, Pettit? Uh, you know? that was a peta envelope, yeah. Well, that's just high quality stuff, but then again, he probably shot by about a five by seven. Well, his son negative. might have been in the picture. You know what? He graduated about 57 or 56. His, his boy, possibly he could have been in the picture, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the well, you can't. I hold it up, it disappears. There. Yeah, it disappears. That's you ought to go on the show with that magic act. That's really neat. Yeah. Now you see it. Now you don't. We don't even see you. Well, David, that was fun this week. Uh, you did a great job again. Uh, good luck on your house in Springfield. Have you heard of Saul? Have you heard of Chainsaw? 
No, I haven't heard from him yet, so I don't know. <laughs> Auctioneer might have called him back and said, hey, maybe you want to go a little later. Yeah. So I tell people, don't bother me between 12 and 2. Well, once again, great shot of Roberta Englehart. We're still waiting the shot of her only son inside a church. <clears throat> yep. Might have to wait until next week. Might have to wait till I die. <laughs> yeah. If you can find a shot of Bill inside a church, I'll give you ten dollars. I give a shout out today to those anonymous ones that said they like our program. I think that's wonderful. Well, I you keep telling me you get that's, comments. I've never heard a word. Well, I, I told you who they were, though. So yeah, but I never leave the house. That's how we get paid. Is uh... well, there is there is it is. Uh, Bill indicates a lot of people watch it, so hope, hopefully the advertisers are get a lot of fame. Yeah. Yep. All right. Anything else? No. That's it. We'll look forward to next week. All right. Let's see if I can. Hit the... I had a birthday last week. I, well, didn't I had a birthday. July, I had a birthday July. 3rd. Well, I had one on the uh, show, but I didn't say it. Oh, well, happy I birthday. That was last week well, on Thursday. Be related happy birthday. Well, thank you. I just, on the day of. I didn't know. I didn't know. Well, I didn't. I don't. Bill turned 76. Okay. And I'm 77. I had a, I had a birthday too. Mine, you think, you mine, think was, seven, mine was seven months ago, but. Do you think Bill Nair tool to be president in case we get the call? <laughs> no, I don't think you are. We definitely still have our cognitive skills, don't you think? Oh, God. Don't you think, Larry? <laughs> and you, uh, well, you both, you have both your ears, so that's <laughs> a plus. Nobody shot me and shot me in the ear yet. No. Well, it was fun. It was fun. All right, we'll see you next week on Remembering Tuscola.